So here's a summary of what we're missing in books 13 to 20 from the Odyssey. I added some images to give you something to look at while you hear my voice tell you the story. So first up, book 13, it's called Ithaca at Last, or really I think of it as another one of so close and yet so far. The Phaeacians, whom Odysseus has been telling his story to, sail him home in a boat. They drop him off near Ithaca, but not right at the city itself, but on the correct island. And then on their way back, of course, Poseidon sees all and he realizes what they've done. He turns their ship into a ship out of stone, but unlike this ship, it actually sinks. This is, as an aside, part of the reason why the Greeks look out at these islands and they say, oh, that's one of the old Phaeacian ships that Poseidon turned into stone, which, if you kind of put on your reading glasses and then close one eye and hold your computer at about 10 feet distance, it sort of looks like a ship, or maybe it looks like a snail crawling across the sea. Well, anyway, Odysseus arrives on the island and Athena shrouds it all in fog so that Odysseus won't go home right away. And instead, she chats with him and says, oh, you should go see this swine herd who's right nearby. Think of him as a shepherd, an old man named Eumaeus. And Odysseus goes to visit Eumaeus, and Eumaeus takes him in. Book 14 is called The Loyal Swine Herd, or how about a snack? Eumaeus takes Odysseus into his little shack, and there he provides him with a nice meal of roasted pork. Then, he says, take this blanket and this cloak, we'll wrap you up so you can sleep well. It's important to understand that Eumaeus, by helping out Odysseus, is essentially assuring that he'll be on the good side when the fight happens. That's book 14. Book 15 is called The Prince Sets Sail for Home, or I think of this as Telemachus trying to get home. Athena shows up as Telemachus has been hanging out with Nestor on Pylos and says, it's time to go home, and so he gets on a boat and goes home. Book 16 is called Father and Son, Not the Cat Stevens Song, or Let's Meet Each Other and Fill an Ocean with Our Tears. Back at the hut, now Telemachus has sailed home, he's heard about the plot that the suitors have against him, so he decides not to go home, and instead, curiously enough, he winds up at the very same hut where Odysseus is, disguised as a beggar. So as he's inside the hut and Odysseus is there, Athena knocks on the door in another disguise and tells Odysseus, come outside. He goes outside to be transformed into his true form. And when he returns, his son sees him and says, Dad! And Odysseus says, Son! And they begin to cry. And they cry. And they cry. And then they cry some more. That's the end of book 16. Book 17 is called The Stranger at the Gates. And this is when Telemachus puts on a disguise, sneaks back into the palace so that the suitors won't catch him and kill him. And then meanwhile, Odysseus makes his way back with Eumaeus the swineherd. When they arrive, Antinous beats Odysseus, and even the other suitors are disgusted by this act. But remember, Odysseus will never forget. Book 18 is called The Beggar King of Ithaca where Odysseus, having returned and looking still like he's this impoverished, homeless man, dressed up in rags, um, another beggar arrives and then challenges him to a fight. It's a bad idea. Even though it's not in the octagon, it's in the hall and there's no escaping, and Odysseus nearly beats the man to death. Penelope, meanwhile, has been visited by Athena, and Athena suggests to her that she appear as in a most beautiful form to the suitors, and then to say that she will decide the next day who it is that she wants to choose for a husband from the suitors, and that they should all bring gifts. It's an excellent reason to get the suitors to stop their feasting and partying and to go home for the night. They do go from home for the night. Book 19 is called Penelope and Her Guests, but really it should be called Stash the Weapons, because now Odysseus and Telemachus have a plan to kill all the suitors, but they're going to need a whole lot of weapons. So they get a whole lot of weapons, and they stash them in a storeroom and get ready for the bloodshed the next day. Now the next day begins with what they call portents gather. In other words, there's bad news on the horizon. There's a feast going on, and one of the swine herds picks up a cow's hoof and throws it at Odysseus, knocks him upside the head, and this is one of the many ways that they keep Odysseus's rage building so that by the time he's going to let it loose, it'll be an absolute bloodbath. So there's some key players we get out of these books that we should bear in mind. First is Eumaeus, the kindly swineherd who took Odysseus in, showing one of the Greek values that even if you don't have much, you offer what you have. Another guy, Philotius, we haven't met too much, but he also, another poor guy, a shepherd, a swineherd, and he comes in and all he has been longing for for the last 20 years is for the return of his beloved king. 
Then there's Antinous. We already know him as the antagonistic suitor. And there's two other schmucks that show up, Melanthius and Iris. These are two beggars or sidekicks of the suitors who challenge Odysseus for fights, and they're asking for big trouble in that. Telemachus, as we already know, the son, but now he's got this newfound courage, nothing like having your dad back home and a bunch of weapons to help with that. Penelope, she's keeping Odysseus's fury up by taunting the suitors, and then they take it out on Odysseus. And through it all, Athena, providing essential help to make it all go as planned. When Book 21 comes around, the blood will be ready to be spilled.